Welcome to The Shuv Show. I'm your host, Christine Jackman. From The Shuv Show series, Out of Context. Tonight we bring you End Times Insight within Malachi 4. I was moved to delve into tonight's topic after hearing, one time too many, that Malachi 4.6 is all about father-child relationships, a paternal thing. No, something much more imperative is going on here than just a vague, parents need to be better parents. Also, Malachi 4.6 contains the word curse, kerem in Hebrew, meaning doomed to destruction, utter destruction. That sounds ominous. Clarifying the correct meaning is crucial, don't you think? We'd better know exactly what we must do to avoid this horrific curse with its annihilating consequences. So let's read Malachi 4 together in context, because when studying scripture, you need to keep things in context, context, context. Did I say context? Okay. Also, remember the essential fact that scripture deciphers scripture. We'll uncover an excellent example later in the show. Okay? Malachi 4. For behold, the day is coming, burning like a furnace, and all the arrogant and every evildoer will be chaff, and the day that is coming will set them ablaze, says the Lord, yud heh of hosts, so that it will leave them neither root nor branch. But to you who fear my name, the Son of Righteousness will rise with healing in its wings, and you will go forth and skip about like calves from a stall. You will tread down the wicked, for they will be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day which I am preparing, says the Lord of hosts. Remember the Torah, the law of Moses, my servant, the statutes and the ordinances, which I commanded him in Horeb for all Israel. Behold, I am going to send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and terrible day of the Lord. He will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the hearts of the children to their fathers, so that I will not come and smite the land with a curse. Kerem, a doomed thing, utter destruction. Okay, in the Hebrew here, lev, heart is singular, and a vote is plural. And it's the same with the hearts of the children phrase. In the Hebrew, it's lev, heart, singular, and benim, sons or children, plural. I submit to you that the Holy Spirit, Ruach HaKodesh, chose the singular for heart on purpose. Let's look at the context of Malachi 4. The topic is not father-child relationships, per se. The context, the topic is, the day is coming, judgment day, the great and terrible day of the Lord. We see two groups, those who revere his name and the wicked, the arrogant, the evildoers. Then he admonishes the reader to remember the law of Moses. And in Hebraic thought, remember means do. Know it, do it. Do the terms of the ancient covenant. Then God moves on to tell us that he will send Elijah before the great and terrible day of the Lord. Elijah, or Eliyah, here in the text, means my God is Yah. Remember, Scripture interprets Scripture. To really understand Malachi 4, you must go and find out what Elijah did. Go read 1 Kings 17 and 18. You will gain the insight needed to really understand the phrase, return the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers. Let's delve into Elijah's message. Why is God sending Elijah? Why Elijah? There's a reason. Here's the key. Think. What was Elijah's main message to the nation of Israel? Shuv, turn back, return to the ways of the God of Israel. Meaning, you know, come back, repent, and keep the terms of the ancient covenant. Become covenant faithful. Elijah admonished King Ahab in 1 Kings 18, 18, quote, I have not troubled Israel, but you and your father's house have, because you have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, yud heh and you have followed the Baals, end quote. This is Elijah's message. You have forsaken the terms of the ancient covenant. You are lawbreakers, unfaithful to the covenant, 
repent, turn back to God's covenant faithful ways, his Torah, his laws. Okay, here's a great example of how Scripture deciphers Scripture. We find a second witness, even an angelic witness, who shows how God wants us to understand the phrase, turn the heart or hearts of the fathers to the children, and the heart or hearts of the children to their fathers. The second witness is the angel Gabriel. He quotes this passage from Malachi 4.6 to the Kohen, the priest Zacharias, who will become the father of Yohanan the Immerser, John the Baptist. The angel tells him in Luke 1, 16 through 17, quote, And he, John, will turn many of the sons or the children of Israel back to the Lord their God. It is he who will go as a forerunner before him, the Messiah, in the spirit and the power of Elijah. Wait for it. Gabriel quotes now from the first section of Malachi 4, 6, to turn the hearts of the fathers back to the children. And now listen to how the angel of the Lord rephrases the second section. He doesn't say, and the heart or hearts of the children to the fathers. No, Gabriel says, and the disobedient to the understanding of the righteous ones. Let me repeat that. And the disobedient to the understanding of the righteous ones. So as to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. So Malachi's heart or hearts of the children to the fathers is clearly meant to be understood as, quote, and the disobedient to the understanding of the righteous ones, end quote. The understanding or wisdom of the righteous ones harkens back to Malachi 4.4, 4, where he says, quote, remember the law of Moses, end quote. Thinking that Malachi 4 is all about parents and kids having a better relationship is kiddie pool theology. It is vague, insufficient, and contains no call to action to the thing that God is really talking about, return to covenant faithfulness. Let me call your attention to one more witness, the words of Elijah himself from that day on Mount Carmel, 1 Kings 18, verse 21, and also 36 through 38. Quote, Elijah came near to all the people and said, How long will you hesitate between two opinions? If the Lord, Yudhe is God, follow him. But if Baal, follow him. But the people did not answer him a word. And dropping down to verse 36. At the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice, Eliyahu Hanavi, Elijah the prophet, came near and said, O Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, today let it be known that you are God in Israel and that I am your servant and I have done all these things at your word. Answer me, O Lord, answer me that this people may know that you, O Lord, are God, and that you have turned their heart back again. End quote. Did you catch that? You have turned their heart back again. And then the section ends with, Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt offering and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench, when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they said, The Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. End quote. So the main thrust of Malachi 4 is turning your heart back to God's covenant ways. The Elijah call is repent, come back, return to being faithful to the ancient covenant. That means to obey the terms of the covenant, the commandments, all 613 plus of them that God reiterated to Moses, who in turn gave them to the people standing near the base of the mountain that day. P.S. Gentiles were there too. They came out of Egypt with them. Jew and Gentile, one and Messiah, walking in the lifestyle of the redeemed community. Remember also the last line of Malachi 4, 6. Returning to covenant faithfulness must happen or else, God warns us. Yep, he gives us an or else. Hear his dire threat, quote, so that I will not come and smite the land with a curse, kerem, a doomed thing, utter destruction, end quote. 
God always means what he says. He's speaking very plainly. How many judgments have fallen in the past and people still refuse to see the real reason why and what they're doing wrong? The key lies in Malachi 4. Even in Elijah's day, salvation, forgiveness of sins, was reliant on the one who would come, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. The broken covenant is what put Messiah Yeshua on that Roman execution stake. The curses of the law, our consequence for sin, our law-breaking, he bore upon himself. The vengeance of the covenant fell on the righteous one. The Zadik, the suffering servant of Isaiah 53. Messiah Yeshua, whose name means salvation. Yes, salvation is by grace through faith in Messiah's work. It is his blood that renews the ancient covenant enabling us to be grafted back into the olive tree, natural branches and wild branches alike. The terms of the ancient covenant stand as the rule of law for the citizens of the redeemed community. These are his commandments, his instructions, spelled out in the foundational Torah, Bereshit through Devarim, or Genesis through Deuteronomy. Fact, God does not change his holiness, his attributes, or his mind. He never needs to because he knows the end from the beginning. This is the Elijah call just for you, listener. Will you let your heart be turned back to God's holy and righteous ways, his commandments of the covenant? Will you shuv, return? Or will you continue to trample the blood, spurn his truth, settling for half facts, whole lies, and doing detestable things that grieve the heart of the Holy One? all because someone told you that, quote, Jesus did away with most of the law, end quote. That's a lie, you know. And we know where lies come from. Just as Moses turned aside to see the burning bush that was not consumed, turn aside to see the truth that has been languishing in the ruins of the, quote, temple, like in Josiah's day. Josiah found the ancient covenant repented and cleaned house. Because of this, the impending fierce judgment did not fall in his lifetime. True repentance is not what you think or feel repentance is. True repentance is what God demands. His opinion and thoughts are the only ones that matter, and you will find them in Genesis to Revelation. Shuv, return. All you have is this moment. You are not guaranteed tomorrow. Find your knees and bend your neck to God Most High, El Elyon. Our Creator deserves your covenant faithfulness. Salvation and restoration awaits you through the work of Yeshua, Son of David, the Word made flesh. What more could He have done to prove His love for you? Dearest blood was poured out. Don't trample it. Don't be stiff-necked. Hear him, repent and clean house, and then go and sin no more. I leave you with this traditional Hebrew song. In English, it means Elijah the prophet, Elijah the Tishbite, Elijah the Giladite. May he soon in our days come to us with the Messiah, son of David. Eliyahu Hanavi, Eliyahu HaTishbite. Eliyahu, Eliyahu, Eliyahu Hagiladi. Beam her Yamenu, Yavo Aleinu, Imashiach Ben David, Imashiach Ben David. This has been The Shuv Show. I'm your host, Christine Jackman. Lila Tove, good night.